What's up everyone? It's Sly Gittins, technology consultant at Ingram Micro. And today we're gonna to be talking about what are some of the most common conditional access policies that you can leverage in Azure AD. In the last video, I talked about security defaults, but for companies who need a little bit more flexibility in cases like when they need to create an emergency account or break glass account, that's when conditional access comes into play. Or if they want to tie in multi-factor authentication and protecting their certain clouds and excluding certain environments, this is where conditional access thrives. So in this video, I'm going to talk about three different policies that you can create in your environment that you can leverage conditional access to improve your security posture. And again, this is just a great place to start. So start off with protecting your admin accounts because they can pretty much control everything in your environment. And if an attacker um, gets those credentials, they can wreak havoc, right? Because now they have permissions to you know, deliver damage throughout the entire O365 environment. So we want to start off with this conditional access requiring MFA for administrators. The next thing we want to do is figure out who do we want to apply this to. And as I said already, for admins. So we won't use all users or none. We're going to select certain users groups. So one question that usually comes up during um, when I'm delivering this demo for my partners are, can I just use user groups or particular users that I want to do? Of course, you can leverage that. One thing that Microsoft recommends you do is leverage directory roles. So in this case, I use billing administrator, conditional access administrator, exchange administrator, global administrator, help desk administrator, password administrator, and so on and so forth, right? And what I'm gonna do to make it easy for you, I'm gonna link below in the description to the document site that shows directly how to create this policy for you, right? One thing you also wanna do is, in the beginning, if this is your first time rolling it out, or as an experienced um, administrator, try to create one account that is our emergency account, or you might hear it referred to as a break glass account. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to what we want to do now is select the app the applications that we want to protect, right? So we want to do all applications for this demo purpose, right? But you could select individual applications if that's what you wanted to do. Proceed to to access controls, and we're gonna say when a user hits the I mean access these applications they will grant access but before we grant them access we will require them to leverage multi-factor authentication so i'm going to require for the one that i selected and then from there we're not going to leverage session we're just going to say let's enable this policy and once we enable the policy um, we'll be all set right so let's click save and now validation you can see require mfa for administrators is on so let me know down in the comments, is this the one that you usually start off with for your conditional access policy? If not, which one do you leverage? Another conditional access policy that's been gaining a lot of love lately is requiring all your users to do two-factor. Why? Because sometimes when you only require it for admins, what happens if one of the users' email is phished and now that attacker has that account? And now they work on sending emails to admin to elevate their privileges. And now they can eventually, with the right tools, be able to become an admin by requiring those certain privileges. So what a lot of companies are doing now to protect themselves is making all users have to leverage MFA. So what are we going to name it? Require MFA for all users. The next thing we want to do is select all users. In this case, I always recommend, like I said before, to make one user, when you roll this out, that isn't affected by this policy, right? Just in case, this is your get out of jail free card if you're familiar with Monopoly. Make sure you have one of these, because if not, it's gonna be a long day, especially if you're a channel partner and you're doing this for your customer, or if you're an admin and you gotta have this conversation with your executive team that you locked everyone out and you didn't create one of these policies. But once you figure it out that everyone has access, everything is great, go back and add that to the account. Or if you don't want to, make sure you create a really complex password and you know make sure to take the the necessary precautions to keep that password safe. So let's click done. And then for all cloud apps, we're gonna select all cloud apps, click X, conditions. 
What we could do in this scenario that I've seen people, how they leverage this, is if they're not adhering to the zero trust rules and they want to leverage some trust in their environments, we could go to locations and then set configure yes and say select all trusted locations. And these, if you're on premises in the company's corporate network, it wouldn't provide you two factor. I'm a firm believer of you know zero trust. I want you to prove that you are who you are, right? So we're not going to talk about that, but I have seen, seen a lot of people leverage that. But this depends on your, your process. But I wouldn't do that in, in my personal opinion, right? So the next thing we're going to do is hit grant access, and then we're going to require MFA. And then we're going to say, you know, require one of the selected controls. And hit select. And now we're going to say turn on, and then we're going to hit create. Right, so now I just showed you, you know, how to create conditional access for administrators and for all your users and the benefits of using each one. So the last conditional access policy that I'm going to talk about in this video is blocking legacy authentication. This conditional access helps with blocking things such as accessing email through IMAP, POP protocols, because those legacy applications don't support MFA. So that puts potentially your company's data in jeopardy, right? But the problem with imp implementing this, your current user base is used to leveraging those tools by automatically blocking it can create a little bit of chaos. So what I recommend and what Microsoft recommends is to put this policy and report only mode so then you can start seeing how many people actually use that legacy authentication versus leveraging like the outlook app or those modern authentication methods so then once you realize it's only a small subsection of your population you could reach out individually to those users to let them know that this change is going to be coming and provide them with the necessary educational documents and the reasoning of why this is taking place, right? So let's get into it. First thing is name it block legacy authentication, right? You want to know exactly what the policy does. We want to do this for all users, but we want to create an exclude account. Why? You know how I said it before. This is your get out of jail free card. And I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but you don't know how many times I have received a call saying, hey, Sly, we locked ourselves out. What do we do? You don't want to be in that position. I'm telling you, it's uncomfortable. And if you got to talk to your manager about that, you might not have a job if this is your job, right? So make sure that you at least take the, take my consideration on that. Next thing I'm going to do, select is all applications. And of course, if you're doing this only for a subsection of applications, you can. But in this case, you know, we're going to set, select all applications. The condition that we're going to leverage is client apps, right? So what we're gonna do is say configure, click yes, and then we're gonna select mobile applications and desktop clients, right? And then other clients as well. Then we're gonna hit done. And then when we hit that done, we're gonna go to access controls and we're actually gonna block access. And then we're gonna say require one of these selected controls. And then lastly, we gotta make sure it's on report only because again, we don't want this to actually disrupt our organization natural workflow. So you made it to the end. Next steps are to like and subscribe and watch the other videos on my channel. Some good ones I think you will enjoy is Microsoft 365 Security Defaults, What is a Sales Engineer, and both of those videos can be found right here. Well, until next time and next week, where I'll be talking about the top three characteristics of a sales engineer. So you don't wanna mix that to make sure to subscribe and click the bell to stay notified.